Good evening everybody. Uh, this evening we're going to try Project Euler problem number 89 which is about um, generating minimal Roman numeral values. I have spent a little bit of time today reading the uh, rules about Roman numerals which they conveniently provide and uh, I have had a quick look at the Roman numerals text file that they provide. I've not actually saved it out yet but uh, it looks easy enough to do. It's made out of lines. Each line contains a number. So I guess that uh, one of the first things that we need to do is to save that text file out and try to parse it. So let's get ourselves our file and uh, all numbers. Well, let's start by writing something that will parse a Roman numeral into a Roman number into uh, an int. So Roman to int is going to take a string and give us an integer. Uh, well, the first thing that, that we know about uh, Roman numerals is that they always are additive. So an empty string is going to be zero in terms of value. Um, the second thing that we know according to the instructions given to us, let me just go and bring those up, is that we have subtractive numbering. So if you have a smaller numeral and then following it a larger numeral, we know that we're doing a subtraction. And the uh, <coughs> law rules mean that we actually know the combinations that are even possible. Uh, and combine that with the fact that the problem says that they are arranged in descending units, they obey the subtractive pair rules, that means that the numbers that we're reading in are valid, so we don't have to worry about validating our input properly. So let's do this quick and dirty. Uh, it's fair to say that we can just program in the subtractions, I think, straight away. So if you have an I followed by uh, anything followed by some more values. Let's uh, just bracket that. Then we know that we're subtracting 1 from whatever v is and then adding to that the value of the conversion from d's. And so if v is equal to x, then how many things can i be placed in front of? i can be placed in front of v and x. So if I if v is x, then it's going to be 9 because it'll be 10 minus 1, else it's going to be 4 because it'll be 5 minus 1, plus Roman to int of the rest of the Roman number. Now, that's not going to work if v is anything other than i or x, so that's not going to work actually. I'm going to have to think again. Case V of let's uh, bracket this. So if we get an X then we do get 9. If we get a V then we get 4. If the thing that follows any of those isn't X or V so we're getting anything, then what we want to do is return 1. So that's 9 plus Roman to int of d's. That's 4 plus Roman to int of d's. And that's 1 plus Roman to int of v colon d's. I think that's fair. Um, I think I'm fairly happy with that. So let's do the same for the next pair that we know of, which is uh, x can go in front of L and C. So if it's x and something and d's, then 
if it's an L, well an L is worth 50, so that would be 40 plus Roman 2 int of D's. If it's in front of a C, then that would be 90. And in front of anything else, well, an X is worth 10. And we'll absorb that. Uh, the third subtractive rule is that C can go before D and M. C. Okay, D is 500, so C in front of D is 400. M is 1000, so that makes it 900. And anything else means that we have 100 plus the rest. Now, the only case that isn't covered by the set that we've written up now is a single character at the end so uh or if we have uh an m or similar so let's deal with the m or the l or the d so let's deal with those all in one simple operation by having a generic some value and then the rest If it's I, then it's 1. If it's V, then it's 5. X is 10. So this is the simple cases. And we want to... Line all of those nicely. I think that looks reasonable. I think it's horrible, but I think it will work. So let's have a go. Fire it up. Roman two int of M C M X C V I A I should be 1998 to guess. Hooray! That seems to be working like we want it to. Um, so let's have load. So uh, let's have all Romans, which will be an IO list of string. All Romans is lines of, sorry, is a uh, read file. What did Darthing call it? Roman.txt. Bound into return dotted with lines. Let's just check that. Reload. Type of all Romans is indeed an IO list of string. And if we go num R nums from all Romans then our num is a list of strings and we can easily map Roman to int over that and get back values and they well let's check a few the first I tell you what let's uh, map so that we get them paired up just so that we can pick a, two, a couple Let's pick this one. D is 500, C is 100, that's 600, XC is 90, and then II is 2, 692. That's a good, that seems to be working. And MMMI there, 3001, MXXII, 1022. Our parser seems to work. I'm not going to labour this point because I want to get on. So we now have something that can read the file in. We have something that we can convert our Roman numerals, whatever they are, to an int. The last thing that we need to do is be able to convert an int to a Roman numeral string. So int to Roman is going to take a number 
and return a string and int to Roman of n. We probably want to do this by uh, sort of picking it apart from the biggest values backwards. So if n is greater than or equal to 1000, then we want to return an m and int to Roman of n minus 1000. Now, if we have 900 left, then we return a cm. I'm liking this shape. If we have 500 left, then we return a d if we have 400 then we get to return a cd do we c can be faced before d yes this is um not the prettiest of things if we have 100 then we get a C and there's a pattern that's definitely emerging here and if I was writing this to be neater I'd probably change this around however I'm not uh, I'm gonna make those things line up though because I am at least interested in keeping things a little bit neat so if we got 90 then we get an XC If we have 50, then we get an L. If we have 40, then we get an XL, I believe. X can be placed before L and C. If we have 10, we get an X. If we have 9, then we get an IX. How about a 5? We get a V. Goodness me, my fingers are getting tired of typing this slot. An IV. An I. And if we don't have at least one, we've got zero, which is the empty string. Let's see if that even loads. It does. Int to Roman of 1998. MCM XCVIII. 1999. MCM XCIX. Does seem to be working. Uh, let's take the example that they give here. So IL is invalid, but XXXXVIIII is valid so let's just roman to int of that and we get the 49 that the example is talking about and if we int to roman that 49 we get x l i x which is considered to be the preferred minimal form we seem to be doing the right thing so well, our goal is to find the number of characters saved by writing each of the numbers in the roman.txt in their minimal form. So let's get our roman numbers. Let's uh, map int to roman dotted with roman to int over our nums and put that in 
uh, onums for optimized numbers. Just check. Definitely looks right. And we have an x lix at the end. And if we just get the last of our nums, then, oh, look, that was one of our examples. So that's good. We do appear to be doing the right job. And the final thing to do, therefore, is if we concat our nums, we're going to get a ginormous string. And the length of that is 8850. And if we concat o nums and calculate the length of that, and subtract that from the length of concat r nums, then what we're going to get, hopefully, is a number that you don't want to look at, which I'll be about to plug in. So avert your eyes. I have that number now. I'm going to go and feed it into Project Euler. And press check. And we got it right. Hurrah. So one nasty way to generate Roman numbers from integers, one really nasty way to generate integers from Roman numbers, and a simple expression to work out the answer in the end. I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, next time will be something a little bit more complicated. Bye-bye.